So this is uh, Malton, M-A-L-T-O-N. Very nice, it is two. And then from here, I'm uh, gonna head south another 20 miles, heading towards a town called Bainton, which again is down a couple of uh, B roads, uh, which is kind of the edge of the moors now and into the wolds. So part of the world I've never been to. It's gonna be interesting to see what this looks like. Just stick around, stay tuned. Well, actually, I'm into, that was old Malton that I just came through, and now I'm into Malton proper. Apparently, this is uh, Yorkshire's food capital, it tells me. So presumably, this is where the pudding was invented. No, not Malton pudding. It's very lovely down here. I imagine it's uh, beautiful if the sun comes out. Well, of course, they're not without their white van calamities. As one turns round ahead of this queue, and slows down our progress for the next 20 miles, no doubt. What a gorgeous bunch of houses. It's actually a hotel, I think, the old lodge. Oh, that's the hotel. Come on, white van. So I'm looking for the B1248 now. And, uh, then I'm going a little off piece because this is the bit where I cut the route from uh, the Barker's Britain book and just cut out that little uh, little loop out to Scarborough. Okay, over the River Derwent, no less. It's all looking a bit complicated. Oh, a bit slippery on the rail track. Oh, goodness me. This is a uh, quite. Uh, Quite a big town, actually. I'm surprised. I didn't realise it was quite this large, having never heard of it before. It's all here, though. Well, this B1248 has turned out to be an absolutely lovely road. Sadly, as is often the case, I didn't have the camera running during the best parts, but it's uh, a beautiful wide road. I mean, it's a B road, but it's uh, nothing like the B roads that I was experiencing in the Lake District the other day. You know, it's a proper wide road, two carriageways. Lovely uh, undulating bits and lots of twisties with overhanging trees, which makes for some really exhilarating riding. Looks like we're going into a bit of a climbing section now. Oh, it's a great road, this. never quite know where it's going next. Love these sorts of roads. Not straight amongst them. Stonking. Woo, look at that view. Maybe that's a wold. No idea what a wold is, but presumably it's similar to a wield. I don't know what one of those is either. But you get wields in the south, and presumably a wold is the northern version. Possibly just means rolling countryside. So this is the uh, B1248 now to Bainton, where I've just gone slightly off piste on uh, the route from the book. And actually, it's a beautiful road, actually. It's, uh, if you do just want to cut a little bit out of the route, then it's worth doing this, because it's been a lovely road. And I just passed a sign that says 25 miles to the Humber Bridge, so really looking forward to going over the bridge. It's one of those uh, fantastic suspension bridges. Looks amazing. don't think I've ever been over it before. I'm hoping I might be able to get a shot or two there, but uh, depends a little bit on whether there's somewhere to stop and what the weather's doing, because the rain started again, and it's all feeling a little bit inclement. Okay, just getting my first views of the bridge now. Hopefully uh, you can see that behind the hedge. Let's go and check it out. Motorcycles this side, apparently. I like that. My own lane, save the toll booth. Brilliant. How terribly civilised. Here we go. Sorry folks in the toll booth. 
and another bridge to tick off the list. Splendid. Sadly, I just missed the viewpoint on the other side. I noticed back there, there was a viewpoint at the bridge where I could have taken some pictures and uh, I was round the roundabout and gone by the time I noticed it. Wow. How cool is this? Wow, as you may be able to hear, it's very windy up here. The bike acting like a sail, having to lean slightly left. Woo! This is a wide old stretch of river, one long bridge, you can see why they needed to build it. That's why I'm enjoying the view over here, just wanted to take the opportunity to uh, thank everybody for watching the videos, I've been kind of blown away with how it's taken off over the last sort of six months or so. I've gone over 30,000 subscribers now, which to me is incredible, in fact this morning when I looked it's over 31,000 now, I know that's not big in the YouTube scheme of things, but uh, it's quite big in the UK moto vlogger scene, so uh, thank you very much indeed for that. And I'm more chuffed to say I've actually had over 8 million views now in total of my videos. And that just sounds to me like a big number. Again, I know in the YouTube scheme of things it's not a big number, but to me that's huge. So thank you very much indeed for watching the videos, really appreciate that. And how cool was that, crossing the bridge? Brilliant. And into my next county now, North Lincolnshire. And uh, again, another county I know very little about, but we're going to uh, experience some of the Lincolnshire wolds now. Welcome to Lincolnshire. Yet another county on my journey. It's uh, properly wet now, and I'm uh, in the wolds of Lincolnshire. There's quite a nice view actually to my right over this hedge. And uh, quite a nice road, but as you can see, lots of standing water, so don't really want to be go thrashing along here and risk sliding off no matter how good the tyres and the ABS and so on physics takes over eventually so I'm en route now to uh, Coningsby which uh, I know for two reasons one it's where the uh, RAF Red Arrows are based at the RAF uh, base there and also it's where the uh, Battle of Britain Memorial flight are based and uh, as an aviation fan, those two things mean a lot to me. However, I don't think I'm going to be seeing too much of it either today because uh, this is exactly the sort of weather when they don't fly. But uh, Coningsby is my next waypoint in the GPS. Got about uh, 37 miles to go to Coningsby. Let's hope this uh, weather clears up a bit between now and then. Give you a little clean. So I'll take it all back what I said earlier about uh, Lincolnshire being flat and boring because <laughs> it's far from it at this point anyway it's been an amazing road this see if I can show you over this hedge look at that view okay yeah that bit's flat I agree but uh, this road is amazing it would be in the dry it would take it a bit easier in these sort of conditions of course but uh, nonetheless great fun and I can see why uh, Simon Weir chose it for the book just beautiful riding roads though, look at these, great views, you can see what's coming. Nice crests and dips and bends, perfect. If you just want to come out for a ride on your bike one weekend and you don't want to head too far north, then uh, all this is here in Lincolnshire. No wonder Guy Martin likes it so much. There are an awful lot of those uh, Think Bike signs, you know, the yellow ones that you see around. And whilst they always send a little bit of a shiver down your spine, because it obviously means there's been a few accidents, it also makes you realise it must be a good biking road. And it is. Pretty much empty as well, which is a real treat. Empty and dry. That's a bit of a first for today. Well, I spoke too soon about it being... Uh, dry because it started to rain again but never mind but I lied to you earlier it's not the A158 that's the road I'm heading to it's the B1225 that's the great riding road uh, once again B1225 uh, not the A158 I haven't got to that one yet that might be good as well for all I know but uh, certainly this B road has been fantastic and much better than uh, <laughs> many of the A roads I've ridden the last couple of days here's one for all you transmitter fans massive mast there I can't even see the top it's gone into the clouds not a day to be flying light aircraft around here. 
Not sure what transmitter that is. I think it might be Louth. Right, road ahead closed, never a good sign. How close is closed, I wonder. Could be on a massive uh, hiding to nothing here and have to turn around and go back. So it turns out that uh, road close was for real and I couldn't go down the B1225, which was the uh, route from the book, which is very annoying. I had to turn around and do a massive detour, which added about uh, 15 miles onto my route via Horncastle and it started to rain again, it's all very grim. So that was a bit of a shame because I was enjoying that road. Uh, but anyway, back on route now uh, for Collingsby, uh, which is in another 12 miles. Just coming into the town of Collingsby now. And uh, I see it's got a picture of Lancaster, a Spitfire Hurricane on the town sign, good to see. Although sadly, so far, no sign of where the airfield is. Often these uh, airfields take the name of the nearest town, but actually is some way out. So uh, the airfield may be a way away, but I haven't seen it yet, but I'll keep the eye skinned. So from here then, it's uh, on sort of towards Sleaford, uh, Grantham Way, and then I'm heading out towards uh, the south of Nottingham uh, to the end of the route at Kegworth. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, stick myself a waypoint in for Kegworth uh, and then just kind of go the most direct route there, which I think probably is the same route as in the book, to be fair. But uh, as the weather isn't brilliant and uh, I've been on the bike for some hours already, I think I'll uh, head to the hotel and... Uh, which is quite a nice hotel, happened to they've got a swimming pool and that at the moment is uh, seeming quite inviting, so that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just uh, exiting Coningsby now, the town of, and uh, I did see a turn actually off to the left of the airfield after all that. It was signed Battle of Britain Memorial flight as well. And uh, really pleased to see that the local school, it's uh, the emblem was the Lancaster, so that's fantastic. Just up here on the right looks to be what uh, looks like a castle actually. Might just be a stately home or a folly, or maybe it's Tattershall Castle. Let's see if we can get a view of it. Oh, yeah, there it is on the left now. Yeah, it is Tattershall Castle, sadly, behind the trees. Okay, so the final waypoint is put into the Satnav, which is uh, my hotel at Kegworth. It's um, 65 miles, going to take me, according to the Satnav, about an hour and a half to get there. Uh, so I'll next talk to you when I get to the hotel. Um, unless there's something amazing on the route, in which case I'll turn the camera on and show you. But uh, otherwise, I'll speak to you when I get there and uh, round up the tour. So there we have it, folks. That's pretty much it for my uh, tour from the Bikers Britain, the tours book. That was the uh, Northern Britain long mileage route. Slightly abridged in my case. Uh, I've got another two miles to go until I get to Kegworth and uh, my hotel for the night. Slightly shorter day today. I think I've been on the bike about six hours today. So. Uh, I'm starting to feel it in the shoulders though, I'm going to be glad to get to the hotel and there's a swimming pool there, so I'm going to jump straight in there as soon as I can and recover before the uh, schlep back home tomorrow on the motorway, but uh, there we are. So a great trip once again, really enjoyed it, particularly enjoyed the Lake District, always delivers, that was fantastic, uh, and really glad that I got uh, the hard knock pass ticked off, which was really the main objective, uh, and also enjoyed of course doing the uh, Yorkshire Moors and the Dales, and uh, also through the Lincolnshire Walls, and great uh, getting the bridge done as well over the Humber. Uh, and then from then on, to be honest, a bit of a schlep back down here, uh, but a great trip all round. So anyway, I hope you uh, found that of some interest, and I look forward to speaking to you next time. Until then, this has been the Mist and Flyer. Cheerio.